beakers. Do not pinch me, Mavis. Mavis, don't do it. Don't do it, Mavis. Hi, everyone. We are going to talk about vultures today. So we're going to talk about ravens today. Nope. See, I've already lost my train of thought. We are going to talk about vultures today. And there's Beaky over there sunning. He was in the back trying to figure out what was going on in the back. All right, I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to tell you all some facts. He may come up here while I'm talking. He just does his own thing. It cracks me up because he can fly, but he likes to walk. And to me, when he walks, he looks like Gru from the Minions. Look. He's such a crazy guy. Beakers. Are you going to fly to the back and see what Dylan's doing? Sorry about the distractions there, everyone. This is Stephanie with Wild West. And uh, hopefully Beaky will come up over here and uh, make an appearance. But let's go ahead and start talking about some facts regarding vultures. And we're going to talk a little bit about turkey vultures. And we're going to talk about black vultures because there's some differences between the two. Um, but I guess let's go ahead and talk about the things that are the same for them. So the things that are the same between turkey vultures and black vultures is that most of them live in the wild for up to about 15, 20 years um, is, the long, is their uh, lifespan in the wild. But in captivity, they can live up to 30 years. Uh, they are both considered raptors. Uh, they both uh, can vomit when they feel threatened or scared. And let me just tell you all this. Uh, but they do, when they feel threatened, they do vomit. And it is the worst smell that, that you can imagine because what they ate usually is already dead and then they get scared or threatened and then now they're vomiting it up. It's awful. Again, Mavis, next week, no, do not pinch me. You've already got me three times. It's not funny. It's not funny. I know you think it is. So they, uh... They do that when they feel threatened or if they get scared. So sometimes if we have to pick them up and move them, that's what they do. And um, I've had a couple veterans when I was rehabbing down at Fort Hood. Okay, that hurts. Stop it. I'm about to push you off. That's the last warning. Okay, last warning. And uh, they would tell me, oh, you know, we've been overseas. Uh, we've been at war. We've smelled some pretty bad things. And even them, they went running out of the room because the smell was so awful. So I don't recommend it. Zero out of five stars. Uh, the other thing that's, to me, the coolest thing about vultures is that they eat dead things, which is really, really important for us in the environment because dead things can carry all kinds of toxic bacteria. And by the time that a vulture processes it and it comes out as stool, it is virus-free, bacteria-free, parasite-free. It's like perfect design. Like you're taking something that's would be toxic to us, and by the time it comes out of them, it's like a sanitizer. It's just amazing. So, you know, the way that they've been created, that God created them, is their head is bald. So when they stick their head inside the dead animal and they're eating it, um, not having the feathers on the head keeps that bacteria from sticking to their head. And then what they do when they come out of the cavity of the animal or they're done eating it, but they've been standing all over it with their feet, is they poop on their legs, one, to either cool themselves down, and two, to sanitize their legs from the bacteria that they've been standing on so that it's not toxic to them. It's just amazing. It is so amazing. And I have to say, when I was learning about vultures a long time ago, that was probably one of the coolest things um, when you, when you think of the way they were created and what they were created for, it's just perfection. And he is over here, by the way. Beaky, you want to come over here? Beakers. It's a pretty warm day today. So um, that's one of the neatest things I wanted to tell you guys with this talk today. Now, black vultures, birds in general, with the exception of turkey vultures, and there's a few parrots, and I think even one waterfowl, um, 
really don't have a sense of smell. It's so minute. So you can pick up a baby bird and put it back in the nest and mom's going to take it back. She's not going to be able to smell you. It's an old wives tale. Black vultures do not smell good. Turkey vultures smell amazing. So they will be able to, you know, circle around and smell it and then go down and eat the dead animal. A lot of times game wardens will sometimes use turkey vultures to find animals that have been poached. Uh, sometimes if they're looking for somebody who's gone missing, um, they will do, they can look for vultures um, circling the area to locate somebody that's been missing. So it's very fascinating. Sorry, I'm being poked in the back by a raven. So they will smell the food and then they will go down and they will eat it. Well, because black vultures can't smell really good, they will a lot of times rely on the turkey vultures and they'll see the turkey vultures circling or about to go land and then they're bullies. They go in and they start pushing the turkey vultures away and trying to eat the dead food. I would definitely say between turkey vultures and black vultures, sorry, she's going after my toes. Um, that the black vultures are more bullyish than the turkey vultures. And so uh, they will go in and kind of bully their way out, even though the turkey vultures found the food to eat. I do also know, hopefully you guys can hear me, that in some parts of the U.S. they do have trouble with black vultures uh, being aggressive towards live animals, and that includes livestock, where they will go in a flock and they will attack an animal while it's alive to kill it for food. And they just peck and peck and peck at it, and that's just horrible to think about. It's awful, it's terrible. But I have heard of that, and so you will find some ranchers absolutely do not like black vultures for that reason. I've not heard of it with turkey vultures, but I have heard of that with black vultures. So. Unfortunately, there is a dark side um, to black vultures, but not, oh, I think he went to the back, but not for Beaky. So the other thing is these guys like to roost in colonies. So they will go on uh, top of roofs. I have a cousin who is terrified of vultures and um, Jenny, if you're watching, this is for you. She sends me pictures all the time of vultures roosting on the church across the street. And they will roost there. They will roost in dead trees. I've seen them on uh, large towers where they, they hang out up there. We don't normally get black vultures in the Amarillo or Texas Panhandle area. Uh, Beaky was found in Childress, which is almost two hours from here. And that's to the west, sorry, to the east but we do get a lot of turkey vultures. And uh, I just, I really want to just talk about how important that these guys are for the environment. Okay, now Beaky, are you learning stuff from Mavis going after my toes while I'm trying to talk? Beaky, come on, come on up. Let's see if I can get him to come up. Beakers, do you want to come up? Come on, Beak Beak. Oh, now they're fighting, these two. It's, it's this is how it is around here. They fly free, they roam free, and sometimes they get on each other's nerves, just like my kids do, to each other, and they will go after each other. But I feel like Beaky could be more of a bully than Mavis. She's like the annoying little sister. So they will roost on uh, rooftops, uh, towers, dead trees, and things like that. Uh, and then they go back to the south um, for migration except for turkey vultures. We, we have a lot of them year round. So does anybody have any questions about these guys? I'm trying to think, you know, I do this all off the top of my head most of the time. And I'm just trying to think of the different other facts that maybe I haven't covered. Oh, turkey vultures. Um, they do not get the redhead until they're a year old. So a lot of people will think they're black vultures, but actually they are turkey vultures. And turkey vultures have the larger na uh, nares than, um, uh, the black vultures will. So that's probably one of the biggest things. And then they also have this really distinct, very black uh, tip at the end of their beak. And that's how you know you've got a young turkey vultures versus a, uh, a black vulture. They are highly intelligent. Honestly, they are my favorite raptor of all raptors. I absolutely love turkey vultures. Uh, Lori, you asked about parasites. 
by the time um, when they eat dead things and it is processed in their body and comes back out, they are free of parasites, bacteria, and viruses. Nope. So they, you don't have to worry about that. They can get external parasites. Uh, they can get uh, bird lice. Um, you know, they could get fleas. But we usually don't see too much of that. The, one of the biggest reasons why you'll see beaky go out onto the ground outside. No. Sorry, guys. I feel like the, I'm distracted highly. I was expecting this to go a little smoother. Maybe him sit next to me and we could talk. But, um... They're both picking on me, and now he's going after my toes also. Uh, but they can get external parasites, not so much internal parasites, because their body can process those just fine with the acid um, that they have in their, in their body. So here he is down here. Do you think you're being a funny guy? Huh? We're going to have to trim your nails. Yes, we are. So anybody have any questions about these guys? Uh, we talked about some of the things that is common with them. We talked about some of the things that are not common with between the two of them. The lack of smelling on black vultures, but great sense of smell on turkey vultures. Uh, they both have keen eyesight, great hearing. They uh, both mainly eat carrion. Well, I have to say turkey vultures mainly just eat dead stuff. Black vultures mostly eat dead stuff, but we'll go after live stuff too. Uh, I think what else here? We talked about how long they live. When they, um, when they do have a clutch, they're going to have one to three eggs usually. Let's see. Uh, when Beaky came in, he was 100 and, 134 grams, so that would be about a quarter of a pound because there's 454 grams in a pound. So he was about a quarter of a pound. I think he has a pretty great life out here on 11 acres. He gets to come and go as he pleases. Um, he gets to get handouts. We talk about how handsome he is all the time. So let's see if there's any other questions on here. Uh, Ronnie, yeah, I agree. It's like he knows I'm on, I'm on the phone doing this live about vultures and he wants me to give him the attention. He doesn't really like, you know, we, we have like a little sprinkler we'll turn on. It's a little, like a puppy pad that they can stand on and get wet and, and clean themselves. And that's the other thing we were talking about before I got distracted. He um, uh, will go out in the sun and he'll, you guys have, I've posted videos of him just putting his wings out. And somebody asked about wingspan, them up to five feet. Um, usually around four feet, vultures are a little bit bigger. Turkey, I mean, turkey vultures are usually bigger wingspans than black vultures. And um, he weighs right at around two pounds. But he'll go out there in the sun and heat up the wings. And that helps to kill off any external parasites as well. So other than just, you know, getting in water and cleaning himself and preening, which he does. When we have a light rain, he loves to go in the out on the ground and, and move around and play in the rain it's absolutely adorable but he does not want to get in a sprinkler and or a pool that we put outside it's just not for him uh, Ronnie yes very very smart well if there's no other questions I think that mainly covers it um, I try to just get those facts right out there and see if there's any questions don't forget to tell me where you're watching from and if you have a question that you posted that went by and I didn't see it, I will go back and I will find out the answer for you. I'm going to turn it around so you guys can uh, see Beaky down here on the porch. So let me turn this camera around. Hey, Beakers. Now, oh, that's what, thank you for reminding me, Beaky. So the other really needy thing about these guys is really the only sounds that they make are hissing grunts and sneezes those are the only sounds you're usually going to hear from a vulture see how wide his legs are what are you doing buddy 